I got a new hat. Check it out. It says Carolina Climbers Coalition. Has a picture of a tri cam on it. And uh, man, it's super freaking comfortable. I love this thing. And uh, yeah, Carolina Climbers Coalition is literally one of the most epic organizations. They buy tracts of land in some of those beautiful places and protect all these boulders and cliff faces that I personally care about. A lot of people in the Carolinas really care about. So anyways, super stoked. Uh, thank you to Will Goodson for giving me this really awesome hat. I'm gonna wear it for this video. So today, I'm gonna tell you about how I personally eliminated all of the symptoms of Raynaud syndrome from my body. Something that I struggled with like crazy as a young kid, as a teenager, and even into my adult years. And it's a journey that directly led me to the Wim Hof Method and led to not only eliminating all of the symptoms, effectively curing my Raynaud's, but being able to simultaneously do things that the scientific community would tell you were impossible a few years ago. Running around like a crazy person in the middle of the winter with nothing but a pair of shorts on, jumping into alpine lakes after breaking the ice on them, and not just being okay, but being great. So Raynaud's, just for those that might not know, Raynaud's is a severe circulatory disorder where it's really difficult to maintain circulation in your extremities um, and your lips and a lot of people have problems. So in milder forms of it, it's really when it's cold and you lose circulation in your extremities and it's difficult to get it back. For me, uh, in room temperature, I also had a lot of problems. And to give you an example, so I'd be sitting in Spanish class in high school, be bored out of my mind, and I had this fun game that I could play that no one else I knew could, and it involved taking a toothpick or something really fine and lightly drawing little intricate patterns on my skin. Now, you wouldn't be able to see them at first, but after about 15, 20 seconds, they would pop up in stark white, and it would last for like 30 minutes, so I'd create these intricate sleeves. I wish I had pictures of this, because it was pretty amazing. You could even get little details on my fingers and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was my little superpower. Nobody else could do. And it was pointing towards terrible circulation to my skin, literally to the entire surface of my body. So that's kind of how it began. Fast forward to when I moved to Boone, started getting into rock climbing and started becoming really active. I uh, fell in love with all sorts of extreme sports and obviously the winter sports were huge and really important to me. So I was throwing myself at ice climbing and I was throwing myself at the mountains. I was snow camping and doing all these things and struggling, struggling so hard. Even in the fall, when it was 45, 50 degrees, I'd go rock climbing, put on my climbing shoes, go climb the boulders, take off my climbing shoes, notice that all my toes were staying exactly where the climbing shoe had kept them. And another thing to notice is when you lose circulation with Raynaud's, you can press the skin and it's all white and it stays where you pressed it. It doesn't rebound. So anyways, that would be happening to my toes. I'd take my shoes off, get in the car, I'd go drive, 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 and all of a sudden I'd have to pull over, bite onto a shirt, curl up into a little ball and just like, oh, just grit and bear it as blood started pumping and forcing its way back into capillaries that had basically become bloodless for a little while. And it was excruciating. This happened to my hands and my toes. Uh, anytime I'd be out doing winter sports, it was a thing. I even went to Aconcagua, the tallest mountain outside the Himalayas when I was 20 years old. I became one of the youngest solo ascents to ever climb it at that point. It was one of the most incredible journeys of my life. Definitely was struggling with it. Basically, I was worried about the fact that as I got to elevation, maybe I'm gonna get elevation sickness. I didn't have oxygen. I didn't have elevation medication. So I figured, well, if it's about oxygen, I'm going to expand my lungs and I'm gonna get as much oxygen into my lungs as possible. So in my tent, I started doing this breath work where I was literally just trying to physically expand the volume of my lungs 
as much as possible because I figured if I could expand the volume of my lungs, I could increase the amount of oxygen that was getting into my body and I may be able to get to the top of the mountain without having any problems, which I did. So that was kind of one of the earliest moments that I intuitively started getting into a version of what would then become the Wim Hof Method breathwork and what, what evolved into my interest in the method. So uh, long story short, I have a lifetime of pushing myself. I had this circulatory issue and rather than succumbing to it, I <laughs> somewhat masochistically chose activities that pushed it even further. So I am certainly not recommending to throw yourself into dangerous situations, but if you have poor circulation or you have Raynaud's, the Wim Hof Method is incredible. Once I got into the method and I started doing it every single day, doing the breath work every day, just taking cold showers, eventually I created something I called my Red Net Cryo Chamber, which is one of the first deep freezer cold therapy systems that existed. I made a video about it on my Rob Lenfesti channel. And I just got into it hard. I started really doing the thing and I grew in my ability by leaps and bounds. So with most people that I teach to do the Wim Hof Method, I recommend that they take things way more slowly. I had already developed in my life over a lifetime of pounding myself against the elements and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I had developed a very broad comfort zone and I had developed a very substantial threshold for suffering and pain and all kinds of personally contrived chaos. So I came into the method with a greater propensity to dive headfirst into something like this and go extreme. Now I do think that doing so did help me to really push through. The redneck cryo chamber, for example, with the Epsom salts inside can get below freezing without the water actually turning solid. So that really helped me get better than ice training and I stuck with it. So here's my recommendation for you. Stick with it, create a dedicated practice. I would recommend doing the breath work two, three times a day. So that's three or four rounds two or three times a day and really get into it. Like make your rounds go deep. If you've been suffering with poor circulation and you know that doing this can really help to eliminate a lot of the symptoms of that poor circulation, can eliminate the circulation issues, then give it your all. And with the cold training, I recommend, contrary to what I did personally, to take it more slowly. I recommend really doing it slowly but consistently. So if you're taking mildly cold showers, take more of them. I would say it's more important to create a high frequency of training rather than a high intensity of training. So consistency, frequency rather than intensity, slowly building intensity to a point that you can still stay in your parasympathetic, stay completely relaxed, and you don't not only hurt yourself, but also create a traumatic experience. If you're in there and you're not having fun and you're not enjoying what's going on, you're going to be developing synapses in your brain that are going to be trying to protect you from that activity. And they're going to make it less likely that you're going to want to get back in it. So there's literally no advantage to pushing yourself to a point of discomfort if you're not enjoying it, having a positive experience really in it in that sense if your mind's not in the game take a step back probably one of the single most important pieces of advice that i can give i've seen people have a lot of success especially with their extremities by doing cold training specifically for their hands and feet so get a bucket of ice and place your hand in it and hold it there for maybe a minute and a half two minutes tops maybe 30 seconds it's fine literally you're going to get the benefit either way and then take it out take a moment don't just go straight to the other hand take a moment and breathe and stay relaxed and really focus your energy into that hand which you can do like focus your breath in that direction get your mind focused on this hand its relaxation and you'll feel that blood pump what you're looking for is you want your hands and feet to stay red and rosy 
And if you have circulatory issues, you know exactly what I mean, because what happens is they'll turn white, then they'll turn blue, and that's when you know that when that blood is coming back in hours later, it's going to be painful. So watch your hand, stick your hand in the ice. If it starts losing its red and rosy circulation, stop. It's once again, better to have frequency rather than intensity. So I would rather you stick your hand in the ice for 10 seconds, pull it back out, then stick it back in for another 10 seconds, pull it out, maybe switch between your hands and your feet 10 seconds at a time and do that with more frequency, then stick it in there and going so long that you lose your circulation and you're back to square one. So let's avoid that. Oh man, I remember a moment with Wim. I was in the Rockies with Wim Hof and we were, we hiked up in the snow. I was wearing nothing but a pair of shorts and we went up into these alpine meadows, alpine lakes, and there was this little alpine stream with the ice on top of it. I broke the ice and I sat down inside of it and I sat there for a good 15 minutes. And granted, I've been doing the training for years at this point and got out of it. I'm wet. I sit down in the snow and I'm sitting there and I feel great. And I look around me and I'm surrounded by other people that are there and they're doing great. And I look at my hands and they are bright red and rosy and I just literally started to cry. It was such a joy because not only at that moment had I gotten rid of the symptoms of Raynaud's, but I had literally gotten to a point where I was able to do things that were phenomenal relative to human circulation and thermogenesis. So that is my story. Now, in moments where I have waned in my practice, which have happened, uh, over the many years of me doing this practice, there have been little chunks of time where I've not done it as much, not lately, but in those times, I noticed that my circulation would rapidly decline closer to what it was like when I was still suffering from those symptoms. So I want to make it clear that part of my ability to have a superhuman circulatory system and be able to do freakish things with the cold is the consistency of the practice. I'm pretty sure that when I fall out of the practice that my body will return towards the Raynaud state. So it is a form of ridiculous, amazing symptom management, but it is not necessarily a cure. So if you have poor circulation, you might be doing the Wim Hof method for the rest of your life, but you know what? If you're doing the Wim Hof method for the rest of your life, you're doing pretty good. So keep on breathing, keep incrementally working on the cold, keep doing anything and everything that makes you laugh, makes you filled with joy, gets that dopamine flowing in a healthy and powerful way and keeps you empowered, healthy, strong, and epic human being on this planet right now. I'm Rob Lenfesty. If you enjoy this, please subscribe. Subscribers are the only way that I'm gonna be able to keep doing this and keep making videos for you guys. I love this stuff though. I am really looking forward to doing this for a long time. Stay empowered. Peace. Hey friends, this is Rob again. If you enjoyed this video, please check out more of my content. Check out my amazing raw superfood chocolate company, Mandala Chocolate, my retreat center, Mandala Springs, and all the different events and workshops that are coming up here in the future. All of the music in these videos is my original music you could find under Amorphos and Rob Glenfesty. You can find more videos and more information on Facebook, on Instagram. Stay in touch and keep evolving.